I'm going to show you how to make these gyroscopic fidget rings. It's an interesting fidget device where all of these rings will move independent of one another freely in all directions inside of one another. Now there's a couple different ways we can go about it. Um, this way here looks a little bit more straightforward but it doesn't work quite as well. So this is by making basically a sketch that is a series of concentric circles and then revolving half of them kind of around the center point by kind of segmenting these circles at this line, this line, and this line. So they are revolved around here. Um, but what you see is that when you do a series of concentric circles, the curve on the arcs kind of decreases as you go out. And so what I found is that as the rings got larger and larger, the internal rings were able to slide out more easily and it didn't move as freely as I would have liked. So what I did is I went about designing it in this way. So instead of designing it with a series of concentric circles, what I did was basically make a series of a bunch of different 20 millimeter circles basically placed at different distances all along these lines and then revolved these profiles here so that all of the outer curves kind of had the same slope uh, because they were all part of this 20 millimeter circle and it kind of increased the mobility of each of the different rings and prevented them from sliding out of one another. So this is the design we're going to go with so let's go through the process of creating this sketch and then revolving it properly. So I'm gonna start here by opening up a new design. So we're gonna start by creating a sketch here on this back plane. And the first thing we're gonna do is place a center diameter circle at the origin here that is 10 millimeters in diameter. And so now I'm gonna zoom in. And so before we place all the other 20 millimeter circles around it, what we need to do is add some construction lines that we'll use for reference. So I'm gonna go here and select line, or you can hit L on the keyboard, and I'm gonna toggle on construction by typing X on my keyboard, or you can toggle this option right here. And construction tells us that we just wanna use it for reference. We don't wanna create any solid geometry from it. So I'm gonna go out to the left 20 millimeters from the origin, and I'm also gonna go out to the right 20 millimeters from the origin here. And again, now I can just turn off construction by typing X or by toggling that off because I'm done with my construction lines. So now we're gonna use these to place the center point of all of our different center diameter circles. So now we're gonna go through the process of adding the first one here. So to add a center diameter circle, you can either select this option here or type C on the keyboard. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna place it somewhere to the left and we're gonna set the dimension for where we're gonna place it after the fact. So I'm just gonna say 20 millimeters starting along this line somewhere to the left of this 10 millimeter circle. And now after the fact, I can go ahead and set the dimension. So I can do that by selecting the dimension tool here or by typing D on the keyboard. And I'm gonna select the center point of this circle and the center point of that circle. And the distance I want between those is gonna be 4.2 millimeters. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add my next 20 millimeter circle. And it's gonna be to the right of this one. And just like with the last one, we're gonna apply the dimension after the fact and this is going to be two millimeters to the right. And again, we will add another one and it's gonna be 20. And the dimension here is gonna be 0.8. And from this point on, we're gonna repeat these two uh, dimensions over and over again, the distances between these center points. It's basically gonna be a two millimeter and then a 0.8 millimeter, and then a two millimeter and a 0.8 millimeter to basically create the rings here. And so what you'll kind of see is that this area here between this is the gap between um, the, the center circle and the outer in the next ring. And then this is gonna be the gap between this ring and the next ring. And so that's what the dis these distances are. Two millimeters is the thickness of the ring and 0.8 is the air gap between there. So we've added uh, one pair or uh, one ring and air gap. And so now what we're gonna do is add the next uh, four, which is gonna be eight different 20 millimeter circles. So let's keep adding them here. So 20 and the distance here is going to be two. And 
And now we're going to add the next 20 millimeter circle and it's going to be a distance of 0.8 away. And we're just going to keep repeating this pattern over and over and over again. And one thing you're going to want to make sure of is that you don't select it, uh, you don't start the center point where it has snapped to one of the other circles, because what that will do is force it to start at that point and we won't be able to set the dimension after the fact. So make sure that you try and avoid that. So you can click way off some kind of distance that's too far away, but then we will always kind of slide it back to the correct point after the fact. So that's okay if it's not in the exact right spot or even anywhere nearby, by adding this dimension after the fact, we will uh, force it to be in the correct spot. What we wanna do is just make sure that it doesn't accidentally snap to the wrong spot here. And I think we just have one more to add. And actually that last one was supposed to be two. And there we go. And so right now it kind of looks like a mess because we have all these dimensions kind of overlapping each other and it doesn't quite make sense. But what we want to essentially make sure of is that all of these are 20 millimeters in diameter, which we can kind of tell because they all come up to the same point. And then we can check the distances between these. And so an easier way to do that would be to turn off the dimensions. So you can come over here to show dimensions and toggle that off. And now we can kind of get a better view of what's going on. So this is going to be our center circle. This is gonna be our next ring, the air gap, the next ring, the air gap, the next ring, the air gap, the next ring, the air gap, and the final ring here. So in order to revolve this successfully, we're gonna to need to add um, some last few lines here. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a line from the center point here of the circle all the way up at a 90 degree angle and snap it to the top there. And here from the center point down to the bottom and snap it there. And so now what I'm gonna do is go from this end point here at a 90 degree angle out to here, the end of the last ring and again from here all the way out to here. And so at this point, we now have these nice enclosed profiles here. So this is kind of the ring and we're gonna revolve it around the center line that we just made. This is a ring, a ring, a ring, a ring, and then the uh, basically half of our sphere that's gonna get revolved around. So at this point, we are done with our sketch. So I'm gonna come up here and select finish sketch and now it's time to revolve it. So I'm gonna come up here to revolve, and the first thing it wants us to do is select the profile, which is the totally enclosed shape, which highlights nicely when we hover over it. So this is a profile, so we're gonna select here, and this is the profile for the next ring, and we can do all of these in one fell swoop, so I'm just gonna kinda of combine all these. And then the last one we're gonna to wanna to do is the, the sphere here. But we can see it's missing these last little nubs here, so just make sure that you select those as well. And then for our axis, what we're gonna do is we're gonna select this point right here so that it revolves around there. And you can see it's already giving us a preview of the end result, and that looks right to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. And now we have all of our different bodies for our concentric rings nested nicely inside of each other and they all have that same um, 20 millimeter uh, diameter circle as its starting point so they all have this nice curve along it as opposed to this one where the curve kind of got less and less pronounced until the outer ring where there was barely a curve at all which allowed this ring to kind of slide through there so this design ended up being much better although the initial sketch kind of looks a little chaotic it is pretty straightforward once you get into to designing it. And this is your end result. So now it's ready to 3D print.